Amy DeVita. This is Top Nonprofits, and I want to welcome all of you who joined today and want to, you know, you're out there doing incredible work every day, so thank you for that, and um, really so inspired by how much you all care about making this a better world, so thank you. Um, what I'm hoping and I'm certain of having having met, having seen Wendy's presentation in the past, um, is that what you're going to learn from Wendy Schwamm today is going to be so helpful in really developing further, um, developing other ways to help your organization make inroads and really be sustainable beyond, um, you know, fund, your regular fundraising efforts. So. I would like to take a moment, um, catch my breath, and give you the overview. Um, Wendy Schwamm, she is the Chief Development and Marketing Officer for the Boys and Girls Club of Patterson and Passaic, and that's here in lovely New Jersey where we got hit with a major snowstorm. So thanks to the... Um, Thanks to the wonderful world of the internet and the World Wide Web, we're still able to be part of this today, and um, we're still able to hold this event for everybody, and Wendy has really been extremely gracious in sharing, lending her time. So I would like, without further ado, to introduce Wendy Schwamm, who will be um, introduced, who will be explaining how to create um, a, a corporate partnership program that really um, rocks and will help your organization as well. So without further ado, Wendy. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I know that we are spread out across the country. I saw the, uh, the, the list of people, and, and it's amazing that we've got people from New Jersey all the way um, across to California. So welcome, everybody, and thank you for taking the time. Hopefully this will be a, a positive and, and instructional time spent. Um, and I prefer that this is a conversation, webinars, I've been on many of them, and no matter how interesting the person is or the topic is, it's very, it can be very boring sitting there listening. So um, one of the things that I just wanted to start out with, I, I've been at the Boys and Girls Club for about three years, and prior to that, I was at a YW. I had my own business for um, a short time as a fundraising consultant worked at a school for children and adults with autism, um, and prior to that was actually in the for-profit world. So I found that a lot of the for-profit, um, the skills that you get and the approach that you take actually translate very well into the nonprofit world. We are, those of us who are in development are actually salespeople. And, um, and so this particular topic today is really about how to engage with your community partners. So before I even start, um, I want to make sure that, that uh, everybody can kind of give me an idea of whether or not, the question I have is whether or not you already have a formal community partnership or corporate relations program in place. So I'm, gonna, um, I'm going to send out another pulse check. If you do have a formal program in place, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. And um, this way I'll kind of get an idea of who in the room. So hopefully you, you can hear, um, or rather you can, you can find the thumbs up, thumbs down. So that's interesting. Um, most of you do not have formal programs in place. So great, and we're going to start moving forward with that. And here is what I want to first talk to you about. So you should see a... Um, you should see a slide that talks about sponsors versus community partners. Sponsors being the transactional uh, givers. So, hey, can you come and take a, a hole in our golf tournament or we a table, whatever the case may be. The community partners being a more transformational type of relationship where it is also um, the request actually goes both ways, the circle being from you to them and from them to you. So they have goals that they have to reach, uh, both monetary investment, volunteer time, all of those things they need to accomplish. They're required by law in some cases to uh, participate in their community. So keep that in mind and move from transactional to transformational. So one of the things that, that uh, I, I and, and our organization did was change from a uh, sponsorship 
or a, or a corporate relations program to a community partners. And what I wanted to do is actually give you a definition, uh, a comprehensive effort to connect corporations, small businesses, chambers, other business-related entities to your organization through a year-round strategy that provides a turnkey solution to match the community engagement goals of partners to your organization. Now, I know that sounds like a run-on sentence, but the idea here is the things that are important are comprehensive, connect, year-round, and turnkey. So you are all actually in competition, for, for lack of a better word, with each other with these community partners. Those community partners are going to want to come to the places where it's easy, where they can um, achieve their goals, where they feel good about the process, and where they are recognized and, and thanked. So that's just something to keep in mind. So um, why invest in community partnerships when individual donations account for 80% of philanthropy? And many of you will know that this is, uh, this is a, an industry standard, that 80% of philanthropy is from individual giving. But, but if you look at the, the reasons why community partners are looking for opportunities to serve in your community, they help to get the word out to the community, which, by the way, is made up of individuals. Uh, because corporations are made up of individuals and because this community partners program will help drive the success of all of your efforts as well. So just uh, just think about that when you, when somebody's saying, well, how can we do this? So this particular sheet, uh, we did a campaign, a community partners campaign in 2015. What I wanted to um, show you is the results of that campaign. So we identified 52 community partners, uh, all but two came on in some form, 26 of them were new. We received four new board members, 600 volunteer hours, uh, two new uh, community partner engagement events. It was about 150,000 in support, 50,000 in scholarships, 35 in in-kind donations, and lots and lots of press coverage. So when you're, asking, when you're asking whether or not it's worth it, the answer is yes. However, there's a lot of effort that goes into that and there's a lot of relationship building. So that would be, that would be the, uh, the caveat. Is it worth it? Yes, it is, but, but you need to be able to put, in, put the effort in um, in order to do that. So what does it take? It takes uh, comprehensive marketing and communications. It means your website needs to be up, your social media, your PR, all of the things that go into being a good partner because the corporations are looking for that kind of recognition. So um, I do want to make sure that if anybody's asking questions or you have any, have any questions as we're moving along, please um, type them in. Amy will be able to get them to me, and I'll try to answer them as we're going. Um, the other thing I want to mention is you should have two sheets uh, in your dashboard or the, uh, um, where your icons are. There's two things that, are, that you can download. One is a community partners um, campaign tracking sheet. And the other one is a corporate relations programs that rock. It's sort of a worksheet. What we'd like you to do by the end of this, um, by the end of this uh, webinar is to have kind of an idea of what it takes and whether or not you are ready to go with a corporate relations program. I, would, I want to be very clear with everybody that if you find out what it takes and you don't have the capacity at this time to put all of the pieces in, then don't do it. It's not worth it. You'll only get part of the way there, and you will have um, not achieved your goals. So think long and hard about whether or not it is the correct way to go for you. And if it is, make sure you have all of these different pieces that we're going to talk about in place. So um, one of the questions that I wanted to get out to everybody, and Amy, if you could, as we said, kind of read these back to me, is what barriers do you currently face putting in a community partners campaign? Is it time? Is it board support? Uh, what, are the, what are the challenges that are keeping you from having a corporate relations program in place already? And actually, I think I can see some of so, these. Yes. Yeah, um, so as those, as those um, I'm sorry, as those comments come in, your answers to Wendy's question, you know, what, what, um, what challenges have you, I'm sorry, <laughs> what have, um, what challenges you've had, or was that the question? Sorry, Wendy, I was trying to answer a different question at the same time. Yes. So, so the question is, okay. what I, I want everybody to to give us the information about what is a barrier that they're facing. What barriers are they facing right now? 
So, and I so think if you lack could of, put that into the yeah. Q&A, that would be perfect. And, there so many oh, so you are able to bits. see it? Yeah, lack now I can. Board support, okay. Lack okay, of staffing. So I want to re- let me let me address these as they come in. So Betty said lack of board support, and um, mm-hmm. you know when you don't have board support for anything, uh, whether it's corporate relations or anything, that that puts a you know that's that stalls the program because board support is what typically is going to generate the momentum. So we instituted a new program uh, last year, last year, and what kicked it off was a large sponsorship from one of our board members. From there, we were able to really gain momentum. So board support is critical. And Betty, if you don't have it, I think part of what you can do is actually go and try to find that um, that board member, that board ally, and say, this is really where we want to go. We know that this is not going to work unless we have um, the board support to kind of kick it off. Can you help me have this discussion with the board? Will you have it with them peer-to-peer? because it's always a different discussion um, peer-to-peer. If you don't have your board support, I would think long and hard about whether or not you want to put something like this in place. Um, Sarah said, lack of staffing. Yes, always, Sarah. Always, 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 right? And everybody who's here in development knows that there's always a lack of staffing. What I will say to you is this. Almost everything we do is um, lifting more than one um, initiative. So if there's if we do our social media posts, we typically plan out our social media posts for an entire month because to try to do each one of those individually takes too much time. So if it's a lack of staffing and you want corporate relations, maybe there's a way to um, to use the materials and flyers and things like that for corporate relations and use the same kind of messaging in your individuals or vice versa. So that's something that you can consider. Um, Susan, sometimes we are competing with our community partners, including chambers seeking members. Oh, you're a member organization. True, true. So if you, then you may want to somehow find a way with chambers to collaborate. Maybe there's a way that if they become a member, um, they also become a member with you, or maybe there's a way to package a sponsorship um, request to a bank or a um you know, in a corporation, that's a little tricky, um, definitely a little tricky. So lack of staffing, again, from Lindy, so I know that that's always going to be part of it. We're small and young and don't have the capacity to hire development staff. So, Courtney, that's important um, because somebody has to own this in order to make it work, but I will go back to that same that same um, statement of finding, it, you're never going to find the time, you actually have to make the time. So every day you have these eight hours, what are you going to do with them? And if you want to have a corporate relations program, then you're going to need to set aside staffing or time or whatever whatever you need. Um, okay, Nicole said, finding partners who have a global vision. Can you be a little bit more specific on that? Because I'd like to answer that appropriately. And, and, and then, Nicole, put your answer in, and then I will, let's see, David, the tough spot is getting into the right person in the corporation to talk with about partnerships. How do you get to the right person? Um, I get that often, and the answer is you need to be in the right place, uh, whether it is being um, – you have to find the people, and typically the, your board members will be the ones opening the doors, but you can also open those doors by being in the networking um, uh, places in your what, – what, what are the right networking groups to be in in your location? How do you connect with people? And then you need to be the memorable one. You need to be the one that they remember, and you also need to have, once you get them, you need to have all of your ducks in a row. So when they say, sure, send me a sponsorship package, you go, here you go, and you make sure you have it for them. Okay, so, Nicole, whenever um, whenever you give me a little bit more information on the global vision, we can answer that as well. So let me let me move to – let me move to – Okay, what goes into a community partners campaign? So here's the three things. Identify, introduce, involve. Those are the three ways that you want to connect with your community partners. Um, oh, our programs are all overseas, so all volunteer efforts revolve around. I, that's a challenge. That is a big challenge. Um, 
the only way I could suggest doing this is somehow bringing those volunteer efforts here. You know, maybe you and I can touch um, offline about that, but but I understand, I do see that that's an issue. There are also issues with people, uh, companies or organizations that deal with domestic violence where there's not a lot of volunteer efforts to work directly with clients. So um, I can definitely, we can talk about that offline. So um, identifying to prospect prospective community partners, and there was a little bit of uh, wonkiness that happened when we uploaded the PowerPoint, so you'll see some of the text is a little wacky, but um, I think we'll get through it. So here's the thing, set your goals, set your standards, set your timeline. I am a big proponent of housework, homework, whatever you want to call it. A friend of mine once called it the dirty 30, and I didn't know what he meant until I, I really thought about it. The, you you got to do the, the dirty 30, which is the first 30% to get to the heavenly 70, which is all of the good things that, that happen once you put in the homework and, and you keep track of things and spend the time to take an hour to figure out how you want a spreadsheet to set up, how is it going to be tracked, where's, uh, as, as, as we were just talking about, who is the right person? Spend the time, go online, look at their foundation. I, a lot of times I will Google TV Bank Foundation um, director, you know, and find the name and then try to find the, the email or find the phone number. So um, setting your goals, how many prospects do you want to reach? So if many of you don't already have uh, a prospect list, maybe you want to start small. Maybe start with 10, maybe start with 7 and see how it, how it goes. So um, identifying prospects, so here's goal number one. Identify, and I put 50, but Put your number in there. Identify prospective community partners whose community engagement objectives match your organization's programming. So if you are global or if you are, um, if you are the local um, animal shelter or if you work with seniors, you want to find community partners who, have, who you know will support that. So with the Boys and Girls Club, we go for youth, we go for education, after school, but we don't go for people who support domestic violence or animals or seniors because it doesn't fit. So that's sort of logical, but it does need to be stated. Think about it. Don't just go after them um, because they have a lot of money. So um, here's what you want to know. And this is when, if, if you've downloaded already the tracking spreadsheet, take a look at it now. Um, one thing you have to remember, banks are the easy ones. They're required by law. They're audited, audited by, by the government to make sure that they are serving the communities where they, where they are located. Who are the key players in your community? Business, politics, education, health. Who, who invests in the community? Who cares? Now, in this case, I said youth services because of the Boys and Girls Club, but who cares about puppies or seniors or whatever the case may be? And who do you see supporting nonprofits in the news? Find them. You'll be able to uh, um, you'll be able to really address those people that fit. Don't just go to everybody. Okay. So here are some of the, the strategies. Begin with who you already know. Look at your current uh, corporate supporters. Are, are they are they giving the most that they can? Is there some other conversation that you can have? Um, I'm going to preempt something that I was going to discuss later because this is important. Right now is January, so this is our time where, or February rather, in January, um, my staff and I, and I say that loosely because it's me and one other person, we take the month of January to sit and dig through everything. We take a lot of time to set up spreadsheets, a lot of time to think out what our strategies are. One of the things we do is in the beginning of the year, we meet with our corporate uh, partners. We set up meetings. And we say to them, here's everything we have this year, the gala and the golf um, and the heroes and, the, and the, um, all of these other pieces, and here's the volunteer opportunities and here's the sponsorship opportunities, and we ask them once. This way we're not coming back to them over and over and asking for money. Each time we connect with them, it's, oh, by the way, this is what's happening at the club and the gala's coming up, who's coming to the table. Um, we don't have your journal ad, so it's a much better conversation. So consider doing the one ask strategy. Um, also, board connections, community stakeholders, chambers, national affiliate corporate partners. So 
I say that because Boys and Girls Clubs of America is a national organization. So those of you who work with them, uh, similar um, organizations, may have connections through the national organization. Um, and then get to know new friends. Where are the new prospects? Research. Um, get the chamber lists. Get the board members to introduce and go to networking events. And in that little gray box, what you need is time. If you don't have it, go find it. Um, get your list, get your tracking spreadsheet, get your board support, get time out of the office to meet with the partners and establish very clear volunteer opportunities. I'm just checking to see if there are uh, how to help. Let's see, our programs are, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so David asked how to help the board to understand the time commitment it takes to make these relations. They want it to happen so much faster. How long should it generally take to make these relationships? So David, the answer, um, if, the, if your board members are business people, then they should understand this from a business perspective. It doesn't take any less time for you to build a relationship for, with a community partner than it does for them to build a relationship with one of their clients. So it, it is, it's the same business. It's in, important to know that you, it's important for them to understand that they are on, you are doing the same thing they are doing um, in their businesses and that it requires as much time as they take which is why it's very important to start with the community partners that you already have because it's less time, money, effort. Um, so uh, if they want it to happen much faster, then they're not getting the point in, in the fact that this is relationship building. Um, okay, so, so Linda's um, asking a couple things about the slides, and several people have asked, and I believe, Amy, uh, that these will be available. If not, I will be able to give the PDF so people can see them, not a problem. I, as a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought that up. Yes, several people have asked, and the recording, the live rec the recording we're doing right now, which includes the slides, includes all of your commentary and explanation, will be sent um, to everybody via email later. And um, you can watch it on demand as well. So I hope that Great. helps. Thanks. Okay, so here's a, here's another way, just another list of community partners, banks, chambers, communities of faith, corporations, local celebrities, just kind of, you can take a look at this, the hospital, the library, manufacturers, the police, the fire, uh, and I put in, you know, haha, the winner of the Food Network Challenge. You know, we all have people. Um, at, at my club, one of our alums was, um, uh, is Victor Cruz, who is a New York Giant wide receiver. So figure out who was there and then get them in, um, invite them in, and, and then you can utilize that to kind of leverage uh, even further communication. Okay, goal number two, establish a tracking spreadsheet. Here's your dirty 30. Now, uh, this shows you um, um, what one looks like, but if you look at it, okay, here's across the top, here's all the ways that we can engage people. And down the side, here are all the, the corporate partners to engage. And um, let me just make sure because it's very small on my screen. I think there's one that says, uh, uh, you know, no, no thanks. Because sometimes the answer is going to be no thanks, and that's okay. So just, you know, if you have something like this where you're literally tracking stuff, then you can just, you can report. So, David, to your point, the board may want to see something like this. Who are you reaching out to? How are you reaching out to them? And at your monthly board meetings, you'll be able to say to them, this is how. This is what we've done. So uh, that just gives you a, a general idea. Okay, um, now comes the introduction part. Now this, um, hopefully many of you already have something in place. You will want to uh, start with your existing community partners and sponsors. Um, you would want to have your board introduce. You can cold call. You can mail a brochure. You can email. All of that kind of stuff. But again, the need here is marketing materials, organized, branded, simple, um, your website and social media platforms, their contact information, and your board support. It, um, this is important because the introduction is now the voice. So now you've gotten their, their information. You know who to contact. Now here's what you're going to tell them. That's where it is critical to spend the time to create the pieces that will be the the um, the images and the information that you are sending out to your partners. So take time to do that. 
and I have some examples, so I'll show you as we go. Um, and also as an introduction, so now you have the materials. Now you want to be the turnkey solution. Well, hello, TD Bank. Um, really, you, you have things that you want to accomplish in the community? We can help you with that. That is a lot of the things that I, whenever I call somebody, it is, um, well, what, what kind of uh, focus is, is the foundation doing this year? Oh, they really want to in increase their volunteer hours? Well, we have volunteers, um, volunteer opportunities in here. Let me send you the PDF. So let it be the one place where they go that they enjoy what they're doing and they're able to reach their goals as well. Um, oh, David said that is a great idea. Thank you. You're welcome, David. So let's see. Um, now, uh, what, should, what should your community know about your organization? So as you're creating these things, um, and that first one should say how many blanks do you serve, not how many. Uh, how long does your organization serve the community? What is the impact? So, for instance, when I talk to people about the Boys and Girls Club, I let them know that um, uh, the Boys and Girls Club of uh, Patterson and Passaic has been in existence for over 50 years. Uh, during that time, we've grown to serve 1,300 children daily through academic, athletic, and artistic programming after school and during the critical summer hours. There you go. Can you do that about your own organization? Um, and actually, let me take a pulse on that. I want to know if people can do that. Tell me if you have something like that that's easy and direct and effective. And let me know, do you have that? It, it, people call it an elevator speech. I think it's more like a marketing positioning mm -hmm. statement. Um, without that, you are, you're, you're almost dead in the water. And it should be very succinct, just like that. The good news is more people uh, say yes than no. The bad news is we have a couple people saying no. So those of you who gave the thumbs down, take the time. Sometimes the best ideas come to me literally when I'm driving home or something like that. So take the time. Let it roll around in your, uh, in your brain for a little while. We need more people to answer the questions, though. 13 out of, that's only 30%. So keep, keep going, y'all. I just said y'all. That's crazy. So those of you who are down, down south are like, what the heck? And those of you who are in Jersey are like, what did she just say? I was so, I was just going okay. to say that's that typical northern New Jersey, you know, colloquialism, y'all. <laughs> um, okay, okay, so so what you are looking at right now is our brochure. Um and those of you who who can see it, it's very obvious. It's designed to be very very specific. Here are our demographics here are who we serve. Here are the faces of who we serve. Here are our locations. Oh, and look, there's our community partners. So Optimum and Cognizant, Toyota and PNC, they are part of the story that we tell to everybody. And you want those community partners to impress not only those partners, but your prospective partners. So they want to see this shows prospective uh, community partners what kind of treatment they would get should they engage with you. Okay, next. This is a really, really cool thing. Um, it's actually broken into two pieces. It's one long pictograph, uh, or pictochart, pick excuse me. And you can create your own on pictochart.com. It's a great, great, great program. This took me probably three days, over the course of three days, it probably took about eight hours, simply because uh, you have to figure out the right things to put in there, and then it has to be pretty, and you've got to figure out you know, I wanted a boy girl and the and I mean a boy swimmer and a girl swimmer and I wanted a dark skin and a lighter skin and I, I so it started out chock full of stuff and it ended up really nice and tight. Do this. It's great. It's an awesome program and it actually it makes it very, very easy for people to understand what you are um about. So consider doing that or having somebody do it for you. Uh volunteer opportunities. So this is what I was saying when somebody asked me, oh, what kind of volunteering do you do? Well, here's our volunteer opportunity sheet. This probably took a, a couple of hours to put together as well. But it's it's important and it's branded. I cannot explain that enough. When you look at all of the sheets that you'll see here today, in the top left-hand corner usually is our logo. So make sure you use that. Okay, so the next piece. Um, now we've identified, we've introduced, now we're involving. Volunteer opportunities, special events, social media web presence. You need to figure out um, how you're going to address all these. And to everybody's point, this all takes time. 
all of it. So if you're not going to be able to do this, don't put in the corporate relations program because this is what it takes. Um, volunteer opportunities, just like I said with that, that last sheet, have that ready to send out. Special events, you're going to do your regular signature fundraising events, your galas, your golf tournaments, uh, your wine tastings. Everybody does something different. Consider a corporate challenge, um, and the, the best example of that is a Habitat uh, corporate challenge, corporate build, um, which they do across the country. So um, consider doing something like that. And then your social media and web presence is important. Update your website. Put your people front and center. Um, make sure that you're sending out e-newsletters. All of that is important. Um, your needs in the gray box, volunteer opportunities, clear, concise, and branded marketing. And you need somebody who will be in charge of social media and the website. We are very, very fortunate that we have uh, somebody who works with us as a volunteer, um, and she has been terrific. I wish there was a um, a place where, you know, volunteers to, and then they could be distributed to all of you, but the reality is you have to find it, and so, uh, very often that comes through board support. I would suggest that if you have anybody on your board who is part of higher education, um, that you go to them and see if they have interns available. So consider that. Um, involving also is cre about creating a calendar of events and then giving that information very clearly and concisely. So I'm going to show you a couple of ideas. Right now we are in the process of instituting Book Buddies, which is um, a concerted volunteer effort. Now, what I will tell you is that we finally made the decision to hire a, a part-time volunteer coordinator because we couldn't add that into our development staffing. It, it just wasn't going to happen. We don't have enough time or space. But that is um, a modest investment, $15 an hour, 15 hours a week. And they will be responsible for recruiting, managing, and um, identifying volunteers. Then we have some community partnership opportunities. Um, anybody who is in, um, involved with United Way would have known about Stuff the Bus. We kind of adopted that. So we do a backpack campaign, um, backpack and school supply every summer. So again, you can see the logo right smack in the middle, always there. This is fun to do. We design these in-house. We design it once, and then we just update it year after year after year. This is a blast. We actually take our bus and go to the corporate sites with the kids during the summer and stuff the bus. So that's, that's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, our holiday dinner and toy drive, again, this is another way to volunteer. They do uh, holiday gift drives. They'll come and wrap. They come the night of our holiday dinners and hand out gifts. It's an amazing, amazing amount of goodwill that happens with that. Okay, the goal number five, expand your support for signature events. This should be the easiest thing, and if there's anything that you can do here without really doing a whole lot of extra work, this would be it. So if, if you um, you know if you don't have the board support if you don't have these things in place and you want to do something this would be it expand your support find ways that provide those meaningful touch points to your community partners that expand support and that could be anything from volunteer hours to actual um, increased sponsorship find out what your community partners want to do and then engage them with the clients um, again in, in our case it's children um, so that works really well. So this is another way of involving um, community partners to have organizational events hosted by community partners. So in our case, for our teens, career and college quest. So you can see down at the bottom, TD Bank, some of our local um, uh, community colleges. They just came and it was literally like a college fair. Uh, it didn't cost us anything, didn't cost them anything. There were no sponsorships attached to it. And it was a really good thing. We, we enjoyed it. The kids got to touch base with um, the schools and the schools got to touch base with our kids. So it was a, a really good mix. Okay, this um, is a, a discovery tour. So what we find is that the magic happens when people come to our club and meet our children. The, um, the design of this is from a, a website called Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com. I love this. I just discovered it recently, and it is great. So make yourself look fantastic in a very short time. Take a look at that. That's a, a lot of fun. 
um, and do these discovery tours, invite people in. So if, if your sponsors don't only ever come to your gala or your golf tournament, they never meet your kids. Just ask them to come by, do a discovery tour, something like that. Corporate challenge event. So this is our Habitat Build. It's called Reading Heroes. This was amazing. We instituted it last year. And I cannot tell you what a great program it was. So uh, corporate partners sponsor teams of five volunteers for um, seven fifty apiece. This is the kids' April break, so they're out of school. So so our staff love it too because they don't have to think of all the things to do with the kids each day. Um, so the kids read with the volunteers. They do some uh, activities, and then they all get to pick two books from a Scholastic Book Fair to come to take home. It's wonderful. So just consider that. Okay. Uh, another way of involving your community partners is to highlight their community par partner involvement, and that is all about da, 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 social media. Woohoo! Um, and I can tell you that uh, before you tell me how difficult it is to manage uh, social media, I already know. Um, again, we are very, very fortunate that we have this um, volunteer who works with us. But if you're not in that space, you need to find the resources to get into that space. And your board should be supporting that. And if they are not, then you can... Um, you're going to need to say to them, this is important. This is important. You're going to have to really make sure that um, you find the space and resources to do that. This is a picture of our website or a screenshot of our website, and that, that red arrow points to where our sponsors are. That, that our, our website has changed a little bit, but we, we still have that um, window down at the bottom, and our, our sponsors just scroll through that nonstop. So consider doing that. And that website is made through Wix, W-I-X. Okay, so another one is about sharing positive stories about your organization and your community partners, right? So how, how, how else can you tell the community about how great your partners are? Um, we're very fortunate, it's 2015, to have some of these. Uh, these were... Um, front page or first page on uh, one of the, inter the local sections. And it was terrific. It was just amazing. And this comes in these we're allowed to focus in and tell the community about um, not just our club, but the community partners. So if you don't have somebody to work with you on press, you need to do that as well. Okay, so we're back to the three steps to success. Identify, introduce, involve. It's critical that you, that you set your mind uh, before you set your foot on a path. Think about it and take that, that time to really consider your strategy. And the strategy, as we talked about, was this one ask. Um, how many times can you ask before they stop listening? So, um, to show pictures of school stuff reason? Yes. So, to, somebody asked, uh, to show pictures of children and school stuff or even inside your club, do the kids or families have to sign social media release forms? The answer is yes. It is in our application packet. So when the, when the families apply, um, we get that. So yes. Uh, the one ask strategy, be the organization ask once a year with a comprehensive list of opportunities that will help your community partners meet their community engagement goals. Yes, that's what you want to do. You want to be the one that makes it easy, easy, easy for them. Let them know the good stuff. And I've said this um, a lot. Uh, forget that last bullet because I had done this presentation last for Boys and Girls Clubs of America. We have a lot of marketing resources that are easy to use. If you are part of an organization like that, use it. If you see something online that somebody else like that somebody else uses that you like, use it. If that if you're looking at this and you see the um, invitation or the picture chart and you like what it looks like, use it. Don't recreate it. That's okay. Use the free on online sources to create interesting materials. Do that. It's a good thing. So back to the beginning. What is a, a community partners campaign? Comprehensive connection year-round turnkey. You want to be the answer they're looking for. That's what you have to do. So this is this is just you know the truth is what they look like before they come to your organization, but after you put together this great campaign and they come to you, to you. This is what everybody looks like. 
So it's just, you know, it's a matter of fact. So I think uh, the reality is that um, I've seen this happen. Um, it works, but you really do need to go get them. That's important. Show them the opportunities that exist. Make sure that they know that your uh, company, your organization is a powerful partner and will will help them achieve their goals. And with that, I am open to questions, so go for it. Okay. Um, all right, everybody. Wendy has put herself out there. She's going to answer any other questions that you have. Um, in the meantime, while you're getting your questions together, just want to sort of recap um, some of those great points um, that she made. Uh, specifically, a couple that I wrote down that really resonate, I think, regardless of size of organization, especially for smaller organizations, is that, um, you know, every day you have eight hours, and how are you going to use those eight hours? So I really, you know, certainly think that that's helpful to frame things in that manner. Um, so thank you, Wendy. So we do have a question. I'm going to send it to the slide area it. for yeah. you. Oh. Yep. So, so Susan is asking. Things. <laughs> Susan is asking, how do you manage the marketing expectations of the partners? We can provide them with exposure, but not quote advertising. Um, the answer to that is by talking to them. Uh, I would much rather choose to have a difficult conversation up front than have a difficult situation um, on the back end. So. There, what I find, generally speaking, is when people, when corporations are investing, they're not really looking for exposure. They don't, they don't really, they know that it's not advertising like a, like if they took a, a full page ad in the newspaper. They look at it as community support. So, again, it's always about listening. What, are, what are they looking for, and what do they expect from you? If you, Susan, have somebody who's not. Um, whose expectations are too large, maybe they're not the, the right community partner or maybe the conversation has to be more candid or more timely up front. That's what I would say about that. Uh, and, and David says, do you, sorry, do you all utilize oh, text giving dona donations at events? If so, what company do you all recommend? Um, I don't. We tried it. It didn't work. I stopped doing it. Um, I can tell you that what we do at events is use BidPal and the um, uh, we do direct asks. We've gotten rid of live auctions because they tank, um, and it seems that it, we're way more successful when you ask people for money and don't give them something than when you ask them for money for a live auction item. Um, so that that would be uh, the answer to that. Just before there's any other questions, I just want to let everybody know the attachment that said corporate relations programs that rock. That should be, and you'll get the slides, but what's in there is an overview of what was in the slides with the estimated time uh, per month that you should be spending on the different things. Um, so th that should be something with the goals as well. It's sort of a summary, so you can use that you know, even without the, uh, without the uh, slides. Okay, so Nicole is saying she attended an author event this week for the Happy Healthy Nonprofit by Beth Cantor and Eliza Sherman. So I'm not sure. I think you're just trying to share that. Um, a couple of other things I wanted to just bring to folks' attention as um, people are getting their questions in for Wendy. Um, you mentioned, Wendy mentioned a couple of great tools, and I am so on board with this too, Canva.com. PictoChart, PictoChart's an easy premium model, um, a great way to create beautiful infographics like the one that Wendy created. Um, also Wix, it is a really surprisingly easy way to create a website. Um, I, I've used it and I can also say that that is great. Um, and also, um, did we say Canva.com? Yes, and Hootsuite is yes. helpful um, as yes. you mentioned it does take time to plan out those social media posts and schedule things, and you ultimately want to, as you said, you're taking part of your day, you're figuring out what the month is going to look like. You should have an objective of, you know, where do you want, what do you want to happen by this month, by that month, et cetera, 
and you should be, by figuring out what those objectives are, you should go back and set up your social media planning in something like Hootsuite to help drive traffic to, you know, to get to those, meet those objectives. So those are great tools. Also, I was just so excited about this. Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com is a great online marketplace for gigs. So basically, if you have, if you need to have a logo created or you need to have a, a logo that is transparent, you can go on there and find people who will do it and turn it around for $5 or more. But um, it's a really great marketplace, and I can attest. <laughs> I've used it quite a few times myself. So anyway, that's my plug. Oh, and also check out on topnonprofits.com. Um, please check out our, our list of the top nonprofit websites. Uh, one of the things that Wendy mentioned was having a website that's responsive and that looks great and is telling your story the way that you want it to be told, but it also needs to appear properly, display properly on all devices because now people are more often than not on their phone as they're going to your site. And if it's not operating easily, you're missing out on a lot of opportunity. So if you want to take a look at topnonprofits.com, you can go to our list tab and there's a list of top nonprofit websites and we did an evaluation so you can see some great examples. Anyway. Um, okay. So that's my and, two sets. Um, <laughs> and Marikita is saying what was the graphic design website again? So it's yeah, either it's, can can canva com, C A N V A yeah. or Pictochart or um mm -hmm. Wix is the website. And um, one thing I also want to mention, we, we've actually, we've gotten to the place with our social media right now where we have about 1,700 followers on Facebook. Um, one of the things, what, what we're dis discovering is it's wonderful to have followers, but we really want to convert those followers now to, um, to supporters. And we want to get them off of social media, not off of social media, but we want to move them from social media into our email database. So as you're creating your social media campaign, just kind of keep that in, in mind for a future. Um, and in order to do that, we have to invest money and time. So all of these things, none of these things are going to get done without an investment of time. Um, if there's anything that is required um, more than time or equal to time, it would be board support. And um, so I feel for you. Um, for those of you who find that's a challenge. Uh, but the reality is, again, if you don't have that, it will be just you swimming upstream. So it's important to find that ally on the board. And um, Amy, please, uh, when you send out um, any follow-up with the slides or anything like that, please mm -hmm. include my contact information. I'm happy to talk to people uh, by email, by phone, whatever the case may be. You can certainly share that. Excellent. And Wendy, um, do you want to just give out your the email address now? As sure, you, sure. You, is so that to reach you? It's it's my first initial and last name. Let me see if I can uh, get it. So it's W Schwam. So it's W S C H W A M as in Mary, B as in boy, at um, whoops, hold on. B as in boy, G as in girl, C as in club, P P nj.org. So W. Schwamm at bgcppnj.org. That was easy. <laughs> so I will, I, mm -hmm. I will include that. Um, Wendy, since you mentioned the board member, um, you know, support being so critical, what was, could you, would you share what your experience was in terms of that? Um, yeah. Uh, the board that I am working with is the best board I have ever worked with. Um, I have worked with difficult boards, um, ones that are not sophisticated or ones that are not committed. I have seen um, that board sync organizations. So again, I, I understand where people are coming from. Um, this is much less of a challenge with this board, but what I can tell you is just like every other supporter, they need to be stewarded, they need to be thanked, they need to be engaged. So if they are not engaged, then that means that you need to first engage them along the way that they um, that would make them feel better about opening doors for you. 
so if it's not um if you're not getting the response you need then maybe you need to set up oh that's what I wanted to tell everybody. The, um, we recently, we're, we're just starting this year, we call them roundtable discussions. They're cultivation events, and they're designed to introduce the club to um, people and people to our club. They are uh, 10 to 15 people who we want to be able to invite to the club. Maybe they're golfers or gala people, but they've never actually been to the club. So we, um, we're having one March 1st, and it is on uh, teens preparing them for the workforce and we're inviting business leaders to come to the club and it will be some it will have a discussion like that this is what we're currently doing for teens um but you as a business leader know what skills are necessary in the workforce so please let us know what else you think we could be doing the key to this is the conversation so we will talk very little that night we will have a moderator and we will listen so if you're not getting what you need from the board members, maybe maybe it's time to have some sort of internal roundtable discussion so that they will engage further in the mission. And once that inspiration is there, and um, they will be able to uh, uh, connect a little bit deeper. And Michelle asked a question. Oh, it's also on the corporate relations. Oh, yes, it is. Thank you. Your email address is there, yes. <laughs> Oh. Very handy. Yes, it is. Um, Thank Wendy, you for reminding I Michelle. <laughs> I know. Um, Wendy, I recall you saying something um, uh, significant about the involvement that banks have in community. Um, could you could you go into that? I don't know if that's New Jersey specific or. It it is it, not. It's a federal thing. Okay. They, there's a you. So uh, David, I think, had asked, "How do you find the right person if it's a bank?" Um, they would it would be their community relations um, officer. CR, CRA is the program, uh, but start with the person you know. So if if um, mm -hmm. and the local banks are easier than thing, banks like Bank of America the, and Capital One. They're, they're very difficult to get into. So if you bank with um, um, and I'm using TD Bank because that's one of our local banks. Uh, if you bank with TD, start with the, the branch manager if you can't get anywhere and, and ask them. Uh, these banks need to do this. They want to do it. They're waiting for you to call. So that that's a very good place to start. Very compelling is that they, they need to be a part of, right? So it, it helps them. And anytime one, you're one, able to help somebody else. One further thing with that, there are two buckets typically. One is marketing and one is foundation. Um, to stay on the TD uh, path. TD, we receive about 5000 a year in their marketing dollars for gala and, and, the, and the reading heroes and a couple other things. And then 10000 we receive from their foundation. You can and should be finding out what those buckets are. I'm not saying you should ask for both buckets at the same time, but you should be aware of them. Good to know. Good to know. Thank you. Thanks for clarifying that. Um, so with regard to the organizations or with the, regard to the, your community partners, thank you for sharing that spreadsheet, the matrix. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's a really valuable tool for all of us to use and certainly to, I think it was David's um, particular question that it helped answer, which was being able to show that too to your board and showing here are the steps we've taken thus far, who we're contacting. And I imagine that also could help in those those conversations with your board of they could, you know, might remind them, oh, I know somebody at at the local auto sale, you know, auto dealership. Yes, and, and what I would say Oh, I know somebody. Oh, that's great. Would you mind connecting me? And usually people say, I'll give you their email. And my response is can you send them an email and copy me on it because they're they're much more likely to open an email from you than they are from me. So, just a little you know advice. <laughs> that excellent advice. Yes, because otherwise that email could e easily end up in their spam folder, never to be seen or opened. Even if it didn't get into spam, um, it would be harder for them to open it. But certainly, if it's being an introduction via email, that's definitely a big plus. So I hope I hope everyone will take you take your advice on that as well. Um, so, unless we have any other questions, 
what I'd like to do is remind, um, first of all, thank everybody and thank you, Wendy, for everything thank you. for this great presentation. Um, thanks to everybody for participating and paying attention and offering your, um, your thoughts as, as well. We would love to get your feedback. There is a, um, a quick, super brief survey at the end of this, and I, it would be helpful to us, um, to top nonprofits and, and probably to Wendy too, to know Absolutely. what the, um, get mm -hmm. the general feedback. So we'd love to, for you to participate in that if you could take a moment. Um, and hopefully I will be seeing you all on an upcoming event as well. So with that, I'm going to say goodbye and I'm going to wish you all a wonderful rest of your day. And I will leave, um, I will give Wendy the last word and um, thanks again. No, just a thank you. Thank you, Amy. Thank you all. And um, again, please feel free to reach out and um, good luck. Although luck favors the hardworking, so remember the dirty 30 and get it done. And you'll, you'll, it'll pay off, I promise. Excellent. Dirty 30. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.